Hello, it's Murder Viewers. Happy New Year and welcome to the slightly late second part to the end of year special. This case also takes place in Manchester, a few months after Clarence Edwards is released from prison after serving his violent disorder conviction concerning the John Lee Barrett murder at Christmas 2011. Some say what happened next was a planned re revenge attack, but the courts decided otherwise you can derive your own opinions. It had more or less been three years since the murder of John Lee Barrett, which to this day still remains unsolved, and about two years since Clarence Edwards, 26, known as Clay to family and friends, was convicted. The new year had just begun and Clarence had been enjoying his freedom for a few months now. Despite Clarence's criminal past and alleged connections with the Moss Side Bloods, he was still a person who loved and was loved. The 3rd of January 2015 was a Saturday. It was also the first weekend of the new year and Clarence had a birthday to celebrate. A private party was being held at the Arbase nightclub on Charles Street in Manchester. Clarence would attend with three of his friends. Jermaine Bonsu, 27, Ramal Ingram, 27, who had also been convicted in the John Lee Barrett case, and Billy Bowen, 23, who had been accused in the case, but found not guilty. I couldn't tell you what went on at the party, but I'm sure most were getting drunk and having a good time. At the club that night, though, multiple celebrations were being held. Junior Richards, 38, Earl Rooms, 27, and Dwayne Henry, 34, were in attendance at one of them. All had been friends with John Barrett. Another version to that part of the story is that Clarence was seen entering the venue by an unknown female, who then passed that information forward. However, I cannot confirm this to be true or not. It was something I came across in my research but couldn't back it up. Ultimately though, their paths would cross, eventuating a dispute which would spill out onto the streets outside the nightclub. Only those who were there know what really happened, but it is alleged that Clarence, while in an altercation with the trio, pulled a knife and stabbed Junior Richards and then continued swinging the knife towards Earl Rooms. Rooms grabbed the knife, slicing his finger, and then disarmed Clarence, which angered him even more. Clarence continued to swing for Rooms until Rooms swung back, still holding the knife he had just taken and plunged it into Clarence's body. It was about 3.20am and a crowd had formed and people exited the nightclub for closing. Friends began performing CPR on Clarence until police and paramedics arrived and took over. He was then rushed to hospital. Unfortunately though, he died not long after his arrival in the early hours of the 4th of January. A post-mortem revealed he had died from a single stab wound. Police quickly began their investigations and within days they had four suspects in their custody, two of which were bailed pending further investigation. By the end of their investigations, Earl Rooms had been charged with murder and violent disorder. Junior Richards and Dwayne Henry had been charged with violent disorder. All were remanded into custody to await trial, which would take place early September 2015 at Manchester Crown Court. Police had also arrested and charged Clarence's friends, Jermaine Bonsu, Ramul Ingram and Billy Bowden for violent disorder. Later though, all charges were dropped. Come the day of the trial on the 7th of September, 2015, Earl Rooms was due to stand for murder, but he decided to plead guilty to the lesser charge of manslaughter and violent disorder. Richards and Henry pled not guilty to violent disorder. The court was shown CCTV footage of Richards restraining Henry during the altercation and having sustained an injury himself during the violence, Junior Richards was found not guilty and free to leave the court. Dwayne Henry, though, was found guilty of violent disorder. Both he and Rooms would be remanded to prison to await sentencing on the 4th of December 2015. At sentencing, Room's defence told the court it was the deceased who produced a knife and used his knife to stab Junior Richards. He tried to swing it at Earl Room's. 
Al Rooms grabbed it, sustaining a cut to his finger. Al Rooms managed to wrestle control of the knife from Clarence Edwards. But even after that, Clarence Edwards would continue to swing at Al Rooms and the defendant swung back, knife in hand. In doing so, he stabbed the deceased, although he wishes to make it clear that this was not his intention. The judge sentenced Earl Rooms to seven years in prison for manslaughter and three years for violent disorder to run concurrently. Dwayne Henry was sentenced to three years for violent disorder. The judge stated, A defining feature of that violent disorder was the anger displayed from beginning to end. The offence of manslaughter took the life of Clarence Edwards, a young man of 26, with a son. His son will grow up not knowing his father. He will know of him that his father died violently on the street as a result of being stabbed. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Till the next time, take care.